are going to be doing that in the future, we still have to do it now. But that's what that's that's your understanding because you're saying if you're going to be keeping this up, but then we have to keep it now. So this is what I'm saying again, because on that same list, these are the other benefits. These are the other events that are going to be happening during that time. So why not do it now? Take your child, present your child before the lion, and let's see how they are going to fellowship. If that is going to be happening, then and you are saying we have to begin to do it now. These are things that are going to be happening during that time. It's a period of time that most people, they don't understand what really the writer is talking about. Get to what they think. Get to what they understand. They will tell you we have to keep the Sabbath even after the cross. Look at, look at, look at this. Chapter 6, they will, they will tell you still the Sabbath is being observed right up to the end of the age. So why shouldn't we keep it now? What these people do not realize is that during the millennial reign of Christ, this is what I've realized. I will, I will give you scripture. During the reign of Christ, before the creation of the new earth, during the 7,000 reign of Christ, there is going to be a replay of the events that were taking place under the old covenant. Sort of like a reminder of the events. And that doesn't mean that we should be sacrificing right now and burning animals on the altar for the forgiveness of our sins. Do you, do you realize that? We shouldn't be doing that now because after Jesus has died on the cross, he took over and he replaced those innocent creatures that were being slaughtered every, uh, every day and every week and every year. And he took that place, right? And if you are found under the new covenant, sacrificing a lamb so that God can forgive you, you are missing the mark. Because the lamb is no longer the actual lamb that you see on the altar. It is Jesus hanging on the cross, right? But you know right now that Israel, the Jews right now, they are in the process of rebuilding the temple. And right now, I heard that every gadget, every furniture of the temple is now ready. Including the altar. Where people have to come and burn animals. For the forgiveness of their sins. I'm talking about what is happening now. And everything we're talking about, even the priestly garments that we find in the old covenant. They are ready right now. And priests right now are going through some teachings and, 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 and some sessions on how they should begin to administer and to minister in the house of God, just as they were doing it under the old covenant. And this is what is happening now. Why? Because also the majority of them, they don't even believe that Jesus already came. They have to finish off the old covenant before Jesus can come. Before the Messiah can come, not the second coming, the first coming. They are waiting for the birth of Jesus, some of them. Now, follow this now. And they are doing that for a reason. And you know, it's, it's scriptural as well, because if you look in the book of Daniel, you'll find we once talked about the little horn and, and so on. And we talked about Antiochus and Phanes. I didn't get into detail. But this is somebody that came in the past in history. And he did what the Bible calls an abomination of desolation. He took away the sacrifice that was uh, taking place in the house of God. And then it is believed that his sacrifice uh, appeared there. And then he built a statue. 
which was then an abomination of desolation. Right? That was then. But he is also a picture of the Antichrist or the Antichrist that is going to come. He's going to do exactly like what he did. And you know, when Antichrist come, we're expecting him to appear anytime. Right? If he comes, he's going to be a political figure. He's not going to begin or to start as a religious leader. He might, he might be a religious leader, but he will be both a religious and a political leader. And he will come not as antichrist, not as antichrist. He will come as a peaceful man. And he's going to have control over the most of the political affairs. Because where we are right now, we are talking about uh, Zim dollar, we are talking about US dollar, we are talking about uh, pounds, and this and that. And if you look at it, even with the US dollar, they are now having problems with the US dollar. Right? That's why we are talking of, what do they call it? Recession. Which means already, if you look at just any economy, there is a problem. So this problem, there is nobody who is going to get rid of it until an individual come. That's when we are going to have one world order. And eventually the currency is going to become one. The currency is just going to become one. Now you can't have one currency unless you have one government. And all these governments will fall under one government and report to one government. And that one government reports to an individual. And you know how Antichrist is going to come. The Bible clearly tells you that he will come and he will make an agreement with the people of Israel. If you read the, the book of Daniel, he will make an agreement with the people of Israel. And then he will give them peace. And the Bible says he will give them peace. In an, an agreement will be covering from one year up to seven years. But then in the middle of the week or in the middle of the uh, contract, he's going to break that covenant. Right? How is he going to break the covenant? He's going to stop the daily sacrifices in future. So which means they have to build the temple. They have not started working on the temple, but every gadget. Right? Because where they have to build the temple, right now there is a mosque for the Muslims. Okay? So they are waiting for that. Actually, they are praying so that it comes down. So they are believing that after the mosque, then they, they will have to build the temple. And yet every furniture that they will then put into that temple is already waiting for the temple. Which means, finally, they are likely going to build the temple. They are likely going to take over that place from the Muslims and build a temple for their God and begin to sacrifice. And then they will enter into a covenant. Antichrist will come as a political leader. And then there's going to be a peace agreement. And there's never going to be war in Israel. Just because of that one person, that's what I believe from the scriptures. That war has been there for years. Nobody has been able to resolve it. They've been fighting. And I can guarantee you that if anybody rises up now and is able to introduce peace upon Israel and the war stops right now, that person is likely the Antichrist. But then he will promise them peace. And that peace is supposed to last for seven years. But then the Bible says, in the middle of the week or in the middle of the seven years, he's going to break the covenant by an abomination of desolation. Which means what he's going to do is going to walk into the temple of God in Jerusalem. And then causes the sacrifices to stop. And then he will sit there and then call himself God. And then Israel will say, no. You are not the Messiah. Right? And the moment they say no, that's when he will then introduce the mark of the beast. 
to verify whether you are for him or not for him. Okay, that will be after the breaking of the covenant. But all I'm trying to show you is the fact that people are going to be sacrificing and the Antichrist is going to come and stop them from sacrificing. Not because it is correct for them to be sacrificing. Not because it is correct for them to be sacrificed. They were not even supposed to be sacrificing after Jesus was sacrificed. Are we together? Okay. So this is something that is happening in the future. But when Jesus finally comes, hmm, do you know what is going to make the end of Christ very, very prominent? He's going to fulfill what Jesus didn't fulfill when Jesus came. Do you know when Jesus came, the 12 disciples, they actually thought that they were representing a government. It took them time to realize that they were religious people or spiritual people. They thought it was political. Yes. I'm telling you, even the people that killed Jesus, yes. they regarded him as a political figure. They were trying to protect their political positions. Are you the king of the Jews? So even when Jesus was now ascending in the book of Acts chapter number one, they even asked him, are you going? Before you can restore back the kingdom into the hands of Israel. Which means that's one of the things that Messiah should do to come and bring peace to Israel. And then Jesus ascended before doing that. And when Antichrist comes, he's going to do exactly that and give peace to Israel and restore the kingdom back to Israel. And then every Jew is going to believe that Antichrist is the Messiah. So they will begin to worship him and, and, and acknowledge him as their deliverer, as their Messiah, until he breaks the contract by an abomination of desolation. I don't know how he's going to do it. Walk into the temple of God and does something. And then every Jew will then say, no, Messiah cannot do like that. And then they'll try to rise against him. And then that's when he will say, okay, if you don't want that, he has the mark of the beast. And it will spread from Israel to every part of the world. You no longer have to carry cash anyway. It has to be stored within your system. And I don't believe it's going to be a mark like, come here, let's write, or maybe use a pen or something like that. No, it's just going to be a chip. We're talking about technology. And remember the people that were writing about the mark of the beast. These are thousands of years back. Right? And it's developing into, we are walking towards that. Right? Walking towards that. It has been, it has been gold. It has been butter trade. Now you can carry a card. Right? Yeah. yeah. You can carry a card. And nowadays, again, we are no longer talking of cards, right? Like in this local setting, we can talk of in cell phone. You can transfer money, send money to somebody. These are attempts to get rid of cash. And finally, they are going to do it. Where you don't have to walk into a bank, walk into a shop and then buy anything. Right now, there's a shop in the United States where they, they've actually tried it and tested it. You can walk into that supermarket, just opens on its own the moment you get in. And then you can get anything from the shelf. And by the moment you walk out of the door, your account is already deducted. There is no shopkeeper there, no attendant. Yeah. You're just walking. By the time you walk out, so Im imagine, imagine, because the system itself cannot even allow you to enter if there is no sufficient balance in your account. Because some of you are even thinking of going there right now. <laughs> And it's happening, it's already been tested because this is a chip. And the chip, is, it is as small as a grain of rice. And yet it carries every detail, every information of yours is there. So it will be a requirement. Imagine if they say now, we no longer use cash and you have cash in your pocket. And they will tell you what you need. 
since you have a card already, it's easy for you to accept it. An, another technology which is better than carrying a card everywhere. And then they will just give you a chip which carries information. And you are no longer allowed to sell or to buy unless you have that technology planted into your system. So this is the Antichrist now. It's one world order that is coming. But I'm just, maybe I'm just diverting from what I'm talking about here, but it's for a reason. What I want you to understand is that everything that Israel was doing in the old covenant, it will be replayed during the millennial reign. If we are going to have pictures so that some of us, because we, we're not even there, we don't know how they were doing it under the old covenant, how they were sacrificing animals. So we will be there now looking into the past and seeing how they were doing it not because it's now relevant no jesus has taken over but we're just looking back to see how jesus was being pictured are we together are we together so even if people are going to be coming there and worshiping god from one sabbath to another it is still in picture it's a look back into what was happening in the past so that you can appreciate where we are now are we together okay so the law let me show you something maybe let me try to make it simple did jesus keep the law i'm not asking you a question i just want to answer it for you did he keep the law Because if Jesus was keeping the law, then an assumption is we have to keep the law. Was Jesus keeping the law? Let's look at it from the word of God. I don't want to give you my own uh, understanding here. Let me give you some scriptures. Luke chapter number 2. Let's start from verse number 21 so that you understand. I want to appreciate the fact that he was keeping the law. These are, how they are going to be doing that in the future. We still have to do it now. But that's what, that's, that's your.